Hey guys, Kevin here. So there's this speech that I always remembered. It was given by a CIA analyst, and he said that it's not the old or the poor that start revolutions. It's the young and wealthy who start revolutions. The people who realize that they're not going to have the same opportunities that their parents had. The people who are children of the middle class and realize that they're not going to have those same opportunities or that they see their wealth and their their ability to move upward fading away. And that always stuck with me because that's where we are at in America in many ways. I think America is primed for a revolution. I've talked about on this channel before that I thought we were going to see a second civil war or economic collapse. And we are sort of seeing that right now, or we were seeing that definitely leading up to the events that we're now in with this virus, but who knows where things are going to go now. I think that America would have had a revolution a long time ago if it hadn't been for the huge apparatus and the efforts of that apparatus, the media, corporate, deep state apparatus. And I want to talk about how just pervasive these groups are into everything. And, you know, it's bad enough that right now we are seeing these people do what they do best, using a crisis to take away all of our freedoms, to command more control over the public, to try to be the hall monitors of society and implement an agenda that's straight out of 1984 or Aldous Huxley's novels. And we know, I've talked about this on the channel too, that those dystopian novels written by Huxley and by Orwell, they were based off their experiences with the Fabian Socialist Society and other global organizations that they surround themselves in with these uh, circles of European and American elites. And you can watch some of the speeches from Aldous Huxley or Orwell where they talk about these things. Now, right now in this crisis, in this immediate crisis, we are seeing the usual suspects come out and some new people, new players that have the same ties and the same backgrounds that many of these old players have. And when you start to look at who these people are that are being applauded by the media and touted as experts, they are the same people who have been against us from the start. And they're not just corrupt, generationally corrupt. You know, our whole system is run by nepotists who got a footing in corporate America and in our federal bureaucracy years ago through subversion or through uh, purchase and are now completely entrenched. But beyond that, you know, it's a layer that's just beneath the surface that's even more worrisome, a sadistic layer, a sinister layer, and you can call it even satanic. People like the Podesta brothers, people like Jeffrey Epstein, these weirdos. You remember the Podesta brothers, the two weirdos who had paintings of young children with demons in their home and naked kids lined up or put in cages. You know, the left talk about kids in cages. Well, they didn't seem to have a problem with the pedophiles who had pictures of kids in cages in their home. That was a conspiracy, right? But we, we've seen the photographs. But uh, I digress. I want to talk about the people who are right now front and center in our current situation with this virus. People like Dr. Anthony Fauci. Now, America's grandpa, right? That's the narrative we're hearing from the media, that Anthony Fauci is this great American, uh, and he's completely nonpartisan, even though he's been leading this effort to take away civil liberties, to undermine Trump, who wants to restart the economy. And we know the left play into this Cloward and Piven model where they want to bankrupt America and force Americans to to want social welfare programs, huge government solutions, and then bankrupt the government so that and the corporations at the same time so that bigger government and authoritarianism is the only solution left. But 
I'll, I'll get into that in another video. I want to read to you a letter that was written by Dr. Anthony Fauci to Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Sanders, the Clinton campaign organizer. Cheryl, anyone who had any doubts about Secretary Clinton's stamina and capability following her illness had those washed away by today's performance. She faced extreme difficult circumstances at the Benghazi hearings and she still hit it right out the park. Please tell her that we all love her and are proud to know her. Warm regards, Tony. So I don't use this word very often, but what a cuck. I mean, the fanboydom and the gushing over, of all people, Hillary Clinton, a woman who has enriched herself to the tune of hundreds of billions in a career in politics. Now, it's my opinion that politicians, that should be a voluntary calling. If you're going to enter public service, you should take a vow of poverty like a priest and, you know, just live off of a housing stipend or, you know, get a very, you should make what the basic uh, private in the army makes. That should be the same pay for all public servants is basic army private pay. That's my opinion. That would change a lot in this country for the better. But of course, these people all come from elite families. And uh, Hillary Clinton specifically, we always hear the narrative that her and Bill Clinton grew up poor, you know, middle class. That's not true at all. We hear this with all of these politicians, and they've all come from extremely wealthy families who all have ties to aristocracy and ruling families, elites. But uh, Hillary Clinton, this is a woman who had been corrupt since the beginning. I mean, if you go back to the child killing, the drug trafficking with the Mena Airport saga, all the way up to the Haiti earthquake and all, you know taking advantage of people in crisis in that country, the Benghazi hearing, which he brought up specifically, this is not a good woman. And obviously all of her friends and associates are not good people either like we talked about with the Podesta brothers and Epstein. So, I mean, that just gives you a little bit of information on who Anthony Fauci is. And he's part of this establishment. These people are all connected. They've really entrenched themselves in every aspect of government. And if you make it to that level that he's at, all of these upper level bureaucrats, they are all people who either curried favor or were put in because they are yes men. And uh, like I said, below the surface, it gets even weirder, like the Podesta brothers with the weird child uh, pedophile stuff. The, you have the um, Clinton associates who have all died, 56 people murdered. And, uh, you know, most people, it's weird if you know one person who died in a homicide. Maybe if you live in the ghetto, you know a few people who were killed in a gang war or something, but there's no drive-bys happening where these people live. These are country club folks. They are not on the street level. So to have 56 people you know die of homicide or weird circumstances just shows how absolutely disgusting and rotten this system is. Now, I could spend all day talking about Clinton and the associates and Fauci and his background, but... I want to move on to another big player who the media are parading around right now, Bill Gates. Guys, if you don't know Bill Gates, we same thing with Bill Gates as Hillary Clinton and Obama and all these other people. The story we're told by the media is that he was a middle class guy and then he went to Harvard. He worked hard and he created Microsoft, dropped out of college, blah, blah, blah. Bill Gates, going way back before Harvard, had deep ties to the American eugenics movement. His father was not some average middle-class guy. He was part of the system. He was a board member for Planned Parenthood, the American eugenics organization, and uh, also a member of some of these groups like Bohemian Grove that you hear about a lot. So Bill Gates, obviously, uh, maybe he did create Microsoft. Who knows? We know in a lot of cases that People with connections to the deep state, to DARPA, they are given companies and technology to release privately. 
and then the government owns a stake in that corporation so they can fund other projects. We saw this with Google, and if you look up Lifebook and Facebook, very similar. One was a DARPA program, and one was obviously Mark Zuckerberg's app. So I want to share with you guys a video that really does an excellent job exposing some of the new players that we're starting to see come out around this COVID response. And it's from a reporter at uh, News Wars, and he does a great job just showing all the ties these people have to corporate America, to the deep state, and to some of these more nefarious organizations like the Skull and Bone Society. But before I share that with you, I want to just say a couple more things about Bill Gates. Now, for those of you who don't know, Bill Gates has an, a foundation that's long been involved with population control and also disease response. He's had a lot of work that they've done in Africa, and there have been a lot of scandals around this organization, including a scandal where they accidentally sterilized some people through vaccines. Now, it's funny because Bill Gates has said that there needs to be population control, and there's a video out there of him saying that vaccination's one of the best ways to control populations. Uh, there's also the fact that he's heavily involved with the World Health Organization. Now, we've seen recently that the World Health Organization is completely controlled by China. And what's worse is we talk about these players. The head of the World Health Organization right now is a radical communist who was involved with a revolutionary communist group in Africa that killed a lot of people. So all of these people are, are despicable, but Bill Gates specifically is very, uh, uh, he's very nefarious. He's somebody who is sold to us, market to us as this guy who's just trying to do good. But when you look at all of this stuff that has come out about him and some of the things that he's connected to, I, I want to just share with you this about... Three or four days ago, I saw this ad, and it was an ad that's been pulled down, but it was a Microsoft ad that featured Maria Abramovich, which, if you don't know, she's the woman who did the whole spirit cooking thing. She is a satanic witch, and that's her words, not mine. She does all kinds of weird artwork involving human feces, blood, and urine. I mean, just a sicko, and here is a multi-billion dollar company doing an advertisement with her. And she's connected to the Clintons, to George Clooney, to all of these other uh, elites. So just something to think about there, too. When you, know, when you look at all of these people and all of these connections, how can we not revolt? How can we not try to do everything we can to change the system? And when I say revolt... You know, I'm not talking about taking up arms. We could do just something like what happened in the 60s with the Democratic Convention, where the left that we're seeing now, these people we're seeing now, they took over the Democratic Party. If we took over the Republican Party as populists, it, we could do a lot. I mean, the next president, right now we're having Dan Crenshaw marketed as the next president, as I like to call him, Dan Crenshaw. Uh, he, he's got this book out. He's going on Joe Rogan right now. Screw him. All right, I like Massey. Massey's the guy who's speaking out about all of this stuff. But if it's not Massey, I think it should be a plumber. It should be a guy who owns a construction company and a small construction company like my neighbor over here, not some multi-billion dollar construction company. It should be an average American. And that should be all of our politicians moving forward. We need to really let this stuff sink in. And from now on, if they are related to a royal family, if they have any ties to corporate America or anybody else, no way. Blackballed. So, yeah, let's watch this video. But he write a book about it later on, but not now. Anthony Fauci does not like conspiracy theories. And if the president does not fire several members of his COVID-19 response team, the books written in the future will likely be about the Bill Gates Big Pharma takeover of America. Dr. Fauci is on the leadership council for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Deborah Burks 
is a board member for the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria, which was founded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Robert Redfield, current director of the CDC, was a founder of the Institute of Human Virology, who has received $31.8 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Seema Verna has worked with Sue Desmond Hellman, Chief Executive Officer of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Alex Azar was president of Eli Lilly's U.S. division. Under his leadership, prices for the company's top-selling insulin drug tripled, which led to a class action lawsuit. Jerome Adams received a medical scholarship from Eli Lilly. Stephen Hahn is commissioner for the FDA, who partnered with Bill and Melinda Gates in 2017. Stephen Mnuchin was a member of Skull and Bones at Yale University, and he partnered with George Soros to create SFM Capital Management. Brett Giroir was the director of DARPA, and CDC official Dr. Nancy Messonier is Rod Rosenstein's sister. Many have been concerned that President Trump has been surrounded by deep state operatives for the past three years. Well, now he seems to be completely surrounded by Big Pharma and Bill Gates loyalists, all pushing vaccines as the solution and admitting that they might make things worse. Does the vaccine make you worse? And there are diseases in which you vaccinate someone, they get infected with what you're trying to protect them with, and you actually enhance the infection. Los Angeles has announced that they're going to pay people to snitch on their neighbors. You know the old expression about snitches? Well, in this case, snitches get rewards. We want to thank you for turning folks in and making sure we are all safe. And the public is now being prepared for mandatory certificates of immunity in order to freely leave their homes. So, wow. I mean, incredible, right? Unbelievable. And guys, look, when I talk about a revolution and especially like a right wing populist revolution, we're not going to get there unless we're active. You know, we're not going to have a, a plumber or an average Joe get into the Senate and, and somebody like us, a populist right winger, get into these positions of power without our help. And that means we have to be vigilant. We need to do civil disobedience. We need to network with like minded people. Right now is a great time to contact your RNC, your local or county RNC, get yourself in with these groups and become an agent of change, get like-minded people to go in with you as subversives and take over these groups, become a delegate, do everything you can to make sure we get people like Massey or, or you know, just small business owners, regular Joes, into office, start at the local level, of course, everything starts on the local level, but do everything you can. Troll the left right now, push them further to the left, you know, get them to really show their hand. And uh, right now is a great time. They can't dox us, you know, nobody's working. So we can say what we really want to say and share these thoughts on Facebook in these different groups. And speaking of Facebook, get into the different Facebook groups and contact uh, people on your local level, people around you who you can network with. And it starts with us, guys. We need to show up at these conventions. We need to start working with other people like the America First group or the Propertarian groups out there. So it's, it's all up to us to really change things. And of course, we need civil disobedience too. You know, we need to push back against all of this garbage that they're trying to do right now with the monitoring, with the curfews, with, you know, every chance they get, they try to take away our liberties and chip away at that tree of liberty. And we need to start patching it up. We need to push back and start chipping away at the left and at the globalists. So we need to go out of our way right now to be activists, to be soldiers in this fight. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you will share it because YouTube doesn't share any of my videos. Uh, you can't even find my channel anymore. It's that bad. And, and that's something else we need to work on too. But, you know, I am on BitChute. Not that BitChute's as good as YouTube. We want to reach more people. And 
again, that's up to us. We have to talk to our, our friends, to our children. And if you're an older person, you have grandchildren, talk to them, talk to their friends. You know, really make it to where people know you as the guy who's going to talk to them about politics because those seeds were planted in me by people like me when I was younger. And, and I really, you know, might have diverged from that for a while, but I always was brought back to that, to those thoughts, to that uh, initial seed. It grew into a tree. So, yeah, share the video, like and subscribe. I'm out. Peace. Take care.